You know, one of the things I think people also still don't understand is what it means, LGBTQIA+. Well, L means language. No, <laughs> hey, this is Miss Malini, and I think it's just the most amazing day for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Elton, for being here. Of course, you know Elton, the makeup and hairstylist extraordinaire, and he's such an inspiration for so many people and a very dear friend of mine. And thank you so much for being here thank today. You, I remember I messaged you yesterday. It's been mm -hmm. an iconic day for India. Yes, a it huge, is. huge day. And you told me you cried all day yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So well, all day will be pushing yeah, it, but, but half still, a day yeah. maybe. So yeah. I'm sure you guys know what's happened by now. Uh, Section 377 has been read down, so it's been a huge change. So first, can you tell us a little bit about what 377 meant? Essentially, it made us uh, illegal to be um, individuals that, you know, were gay or part of the LGBTQIA spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so in essence, we could be blackmailed. Uh, by authority figures, you know, you could be um, threatened, you could be, you could have violence against you and there's nothing you can do about it because if you report something to the cops, say for instance, if I have a hookup at home and he steals my laptop and my watch and goes away, I can't even go and say get in trouble. that I've done anything yeah. because then I get jailed for, yeah. for having yeah. that kind of uh, connection in the first place. But I think it's, it's pretty crazy and I think it's one of the things that you can't believe that it took till 2018 for this mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. But I just want to go back a little bit in time for you. You know, you've been such an icon for people because unfortunately in India, people still don't come out, right? And yeah. even if there's so many celebrities who are not able to make that leap, you know, yeah. like you have Ellen DeGeneres who really mm -hmm. has made such a difference. Yeah. But you're one of the people who everyone looks up to and says, okay, maybe I can also be honest and come out. So what was it like for you growing up? How did you do it? I mean, I'm uh, 37. So when I was growing up, we didn't even have mobile phones. You know, we didn't even have that those fat Nokia phones. Yeah. So there was no way of really. Uh, today we have apps like a Tinder, Finder, Grinder, all of these things to you know to find somebody to get off with or or just have a connection. Um, but in those days, you had to literally go to Yahoo Messenger chat room. There was no Orkut, there was no Facebook. Uh, so we would go on the. I would go on these Yahoo Messenger chat rooms on my uh, PC. Again, our PC is shared by your. Know, your parents, your your siblings, people that come home, your search bar. We didn't even know how to erase that search history. Yeah. So it's so it was so dangerous, constantly second guessing yourself every mm. every step of the way. Mm. Uh, so you'd go into these chat rooms, uh, and then you'd shout to like something like uh, 18 mail Hyderabad," <laughs> and you'd use as colorful a font and as large a font, yeah. and you know decorate it and post it in the chat room until somebody replies to you on the private saying, yeah. hey, I'm in Hyderabad too, where are you? Okay, yeah. uh, so and so and so, uh, do you want to meet up and let's, you know, and then, and then you don't know if it's a real person, if it's someone trying to loot you at the end of it, if he's got three friends there who's going to beat you up. Um, so this is how we learn and, and so to get off and uh, get rid of that sort of aggression that you, you build when you don't have a sexual life uh, mm -hmm. for the most part, we would have to, uh, literally subscribe to gay culture, which is mm -hmm. which is universal, and a lot of people might uh, look down on this fact, but I will share it with you honestly. Um, the gay culture back in the day did involve uh, going out and finding sex in, say, for example, a public garden, a public park, uh, a urinal, uh, uh, outside a bus stop, general loos, and things like that. That's mm -hmm. where you found other men who were willing to. That's the only place you could be yourself uh, and you know this is the only a really valid place to expose your genitals and yeah. show it off to someone if you had yeah. to uh, or to look at someone else's body and think oh my god okay I, that's kind of interesting to me I've never seen a man um, yeah. you know standing next to me with his dick in his hands but yeah. that's it's interesting yeah. I don't want to look but it's still interesting yeah. um, so that that was the gay culture that I was a part of yeah. you know and I don't feel shame for it um, but today with uh, apps and everything is so much easier. Yeah. So, so how does it feel now? What does it mean to you that this has happened? It's just so validating, right? And like you said, it gives you dignity. Mm. Um, in in just you you learn to look at uh, look at yourself in the mirror and respect who you who you can see, and not to run away from uh, from ghosts of your past. It's so it's so important to wear them mm. as badges of honor. And you know, you've been like you said, you're 37 now. You've been mm. through so much. What was your journey? How did you come out, and how hard was it? So when I came out, uh, I was 21. If you're a young straight boy, right? When you're small, you tend to have a lot of um, 
uh, guy friends yeah. because you click over the fact yeah. that oh dude it's boys versus girls <laughs> yeah we play cricket oh god please we don't do it. Yeah. Right? and then when you're growing up into a teenager and another when you hit puberty and mm. after that then you start having girls over more often because mm. you're trying to create these you know find yeah. yourself really and find yeah. your sexuality um for me it was the reverse mm. i grew up with only women around me my friends were always girls i had so many sisters and i only bonded with the girls and then when i reached puberty and after that it was only boys coming home <laughs> uh, and only boys entering my room yeah. so i'm sure my parents had yeah. some inkling yeah. but they they go through a phase of denial mm. right everybody does all yeah. parents do yeah. so it's hard for them to accept so you really have to be sure of what you like yeah and like i always tell my f- young friends who want to come out that don't come out until uh you're ready until yeah. you know for for sure what you, what you're about find mm. take your own time find your own path and mm. then share it mm. with whoever uh so when i came out at 21 my my mom was in tears and clutching her hands and praying yeah. oh my god and it was a 2 hour long discussion yeah uh with her crying and my father was like in his typical stressful pose and you know yeah. it was like uh it was quite uh, tormenting because there was a lot of rude things uh thrown my way but i you just have to yeah lump it and now are they right? they get and it no i mean i left home when i was 23 because i was so fed up of uh, mm. uh i mean with all due respect i love my parents but my mother really made my life hard uh during that time i remember waking up every day to her uh, with her hand on my forehead and saying like jesus get the demons out of this boy you know oh, that kind yeah. of a thing mm. uh, or i'd wake up and i'd go to the bathroom to brush my teeth and there's a posted on the mirror with a bible quote I'd open my wardrobe and there's a bible code in there. I I do something else and there's a bible code over there. So I felt like the room absorbs all of this energy mm. and it made me suicidal uh, f- uh for a short bit but uh I never felt that weak to yeah. subscribe to those th- thoughts. So I just decided that I would uh, up and leave. Yeah. Uh and I knew that Bombay is the only city because I was schooled here in the suburbs. Uh I knew that it's the only city that I could come back to that would sort of I would find some um something to embrace. Do you think this is going to make an actual change in people's minds? I mean Hell it's yeah. all well and good that you know legally absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What ultimately when you go to a court of law if tomorrow you have you have done me wrong you at can least say something. I can take you to court. Mm. You know mm. and I can hope for some sort of redemption be it monetary or be it whatever 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 and it it sets an example for so many others mm. so I think having the law on your side is really important because you mm. want to respect the law yeah ultimately we're all we're all living within I heard that you know, that, you know Bombay framework. really celebrated when this happened Bombay it? celebrated yeah. we went out first to Carter Road yeah. uh in the evening there was a little gathering and we sang uh songs and shouted slogans and um you know strangers there were random strangers just distributing jalebi yeah, and so they got their doggies and there were little yeah. babies yeah. and i said to three women that were gathered i said you know you're such great mothers i'm i'm so yeah. happy to see that these children have a chance yeah. uh, to experience parents like you guys yeah. Yeah. um straight people yeah. just teaching their children to see Uh, all of these queer people collected here and yeah. and to know that this is this is normal yeah and like you know you set me this amazing the whole legal document which is like some 800 pages long one of the things that really struck me is that the british prime minister uh in april 2018 said that uh Theresa they, May you're yes, talking about yes yeah yeah and she said that you know uh the commonwealth nations uh you know urge them to overhaul this outdated anti-gay law and express regret regarding britain's role in There you actually go. coming and that you really go. struck me another thing that will strike you then yeah. is that if you think about it back in the day we've had um sufi poets that were gay we've had transgender women back in the day this is yeah. right this yeah. is before india before it was colonized yeah and um the western world in those days saw india's sexual I read this somewhere as well so India's sexual fluidity uh as alien and bizarre and sort of uh, immoral mm. and so they changed it right so what India today where we are going where we are heading is not uh we're not westernizing ourselves it's just we're just decolonizing mm. and I read this somewhere it made so much sense to Indeed, me yeah. I mean we come from Kajuraho and Kama Sutra That's what it is so this is the beginning so what next what needs to happen next especially in india i mean right now we've just kicked doors open mm. but it's all it's it it's like a floodgate situation really you know i i i really believe that we have to empower women mm. first uh because they are mothers yeah. um and i think if 
young children are brought up to be empowered, uh, brought up uh, and given space to grow, given their own pace, uh, given options and said, you know, this, this, is, this is what's uh, on the menu. Yeah. You pick and you see yeah. and today you may like chicken and tomorrow you may like pork and the yeah. after tomorrow you're vegan yeah. and that's fine. Uh, and I think that is important for equality of gender. Uh, and then everything else will fall into place. Mm. But until we get rid of these, this bizarre situation that we are in po socio-politically in our country, um, we need new leaders. Mm. We need young people that, that represent the mindset. Um, I think the, my biggest thing would be, my biggest tip for anybody, uh, especially uh, straight people out there, would be to never think that, oh, my voice is not going to matter what I think is not going to matter, so I, I don't have to say it. Mm. Because your silence is as good as not helping, and it's as good as voting for the other side. What happened with you that maybe if you can go back and tell yourself, I'm sure there are things that you experienced mm. which must have been so painful, mm. that now you wish that, you know, had you been equipped with this confidence, that you could have handled differently? I think if I was introduced to sexuality as a child, uh, and not treated like this is something not for you to, you mm. know, I think I would have uh, been able to address uh, being abused as a child better. I would have been better equipped uh, to know what to say to my abusers or how to deal with that situation or to go and tell my parents at the right time. Um, because of course it happened. Yeah. You know, it happened with uh, more than one instance. And uh, it's painful. Uh, because as a child, you one, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, and why? Your body yeah. is not even ready for anything, yeah. really. So mm -hmm. you're just like, okay, this must be life. Mm -hmm. You don't know any better. Yeah. And so much of shame. Um, and you can't look at yourself in the mirror after that, even as a young child. You know when something's wrong. Morality doesn't come with religion. So what's the next step? What do you wish happens next? Gay marriage, being able to adopt kids? What? No, I think next? you need to... I, people really need to take it easy. Breathe a little. The, the, the struggle is not won by instant results, mm -hmm. right? You have to change the way society thinks. Uh, it takes years, it takes decades. Um, maybe uh, gay marriage will happen in the next 10 years. Who knows? Maybe five years, maybe yeah. two years. I don't know. But I'm not in a rush. What I am in a rush for is that people uh, understand what compersion is. Yeah. And they understand that family doesn't have to be biological. You create your own family with people that accept you and nurture mm. you and encourage you to be you. Mm. Um, uh, these are things of the moment. Sex education is necessary. Mm. I think when a, before a child hits puberty, uh, so in about maybe grade eight, you're taught about what anatomy is, yeah. sexuality, oh. gender, the entire spectrum. Uh, we need teachers to not feel shame, mm. you know. I think that's the biggest problem is this yeah. global shame. And yeah. I think, you know, one of the things I was thinking about while you're speaking is why are people identified by their sexuality? Like, mm. it's not just that. You're yeah, not just correct. your sexuality. You know, people make that yeah. such a big deal when someone is gay or yeah. lesbian, but they don't walk around making a big deal about me being straight. Yeah. You know, and, you know, the same thing. I'm so thrilled for all my friends mm. because of, from a safety perspective, from a dignity perspective, and I think you're one of the people I've admired so for so long, so much. Thank We've you, sort of man. grown up of together course, in our yeah. journey, and um, you're doing incredible things. And, and I, I mean, you've seen a, me when I was new in Bombay, and you see yeah, me today. Yeah, and look at what you accomplished. Just, not just, yeah. even, even the way I look and the just way I dress, the and what a vibe, and, yeah. and, and I career. Think this is what's going to make such a big difference yeah. to so many people who are yeah. watching this. Thank you so much, Elton. Thank you, Marianne, And I'm so pleased, and I'm so happy for all of us. Yes. And I'm going to celebrate with you, hopefully, yes. at the next gay bar that opens in Bombay very soon. Yes. <laughs> it should happen. Yes. Love is not yeah. love yeah. unless you verbalize it. Absolutely. Thank you. Coercion! <laughs>